Roll call. John. Here. 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 John. Here. John. Here. Um, I'd like to thank you all for coming today. Um, it started out, we were just going to meet with the road department and try to come up with some ideas of what we need to do going forward. And um, it was decided that we would invite all the township officers as well because you guys are obviously an integral part of the county highway department since we do the maintenance on since we do the maintenance on most of the township roads, is that hot? Is that hot? Is that better? Okay, thank you. So, um, with that, um, I would have uh, anybody that has any additions or corrections to the agenda, I guess. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. The motion made by Mark to approve the agenda. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we'll just get right into the <coughs> county road budget discussion. I am <coughs> the road department portfolio is held by Dale Peterson and John Wakefield. Um, John and Dale have put quite a bit of time into trying to sort out what we need to do going forward. As you may or may not know, we have four maintainers in the county which are leased. Those leases are going to be up in August of 2018. So there are that's why we're we're here really because it's going to cause the, the cost of those things is going to change drastically if we continue to lease blades and go and get more new ones. So with that, I think I'll turn it over to John and he can kind of go through his whiteboard data. Yeah, um, a little background on what most of the problems caused here were because of, as any of you are in farming understand, Prices have drastically escalated. Equipment prices, repairs, fuel. Um, that was made a little bit complicated by the fact that uh, we traded out of the machines earlier, early than normal in the last go round, and we used up any equity. So these are true leases that we have right now. Uh, the current lease payment is a relatively low $72,522. Um, that's for all the machines. That was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we came about that by using some equity in the machines up front and then having a balloon payment <coughs> when we turned the machines back. Right. So it made for, at the time that was done, I believe it was done because we weren't getting a lot of state aid as we have been in the last couple of years. So the money that was we saved on the road graders was going into gravel and the basic overall operation of the county. Is that a fair assumption, I think, Wayne? I think so. Yeah. So what's changed since then is the state, as, you, as you're aware, in the last two years have pumped a lot of money into the townships and into the county. In the county's case, uh, 3.2 million in the last two years. Now, because we had that money, we use it almost exclusively for gravel, that offset any costs that the taxpayers, the county taxpayers, would have had to put forward for the operation of the road department. Um, uh, you might not be aware, but in the 2019-2020 calendar years, the state has reduced that $3.2 million to zero. So now the county and the townships also they lost their ten thousand dollars per township. Now everybody's in a position where, in order to maintain these roads, we're no longer going to be giving given a lot of help from the state, and we're going to have to try to make it up elsewhere. So that, along with the fact that now we have no equity in these machines, these are true leases. We turn them back. There's no equity in them. If we want to buy out the machine as we turn it back it would be $670,000. Uh, 
Um, plus, we would have to pay the final lease payment of the $72,500. We have to pay that anyway. That's due in May. Yeah, that's due in May. <coughs> but if we wanted to buy out the machines, it would be, it would be the combination of both. Right. <coughs> we currently have budgeted $110,000 in the equipment budget for 18. Um, so just to turn the machines back, and this is an estimate, a payment for all four machines, a lease payment. It might be a little high, it might be a little low, $180,000. If we were to move forward with leasing four new machines at $180,000, paying the final lease payment of $72,000, that would give us a shortfall in the budget of $142,000. That is possibly on a one-year basis, if you look at your budgets, that's possibly overcome, can be overcome on a short-term basis. If you look at item, item 16, 17, and item 30, so it's uh, engineering for 20,000, outside contractor for 150,000, and gravel for 130,500. Those could possibly be set aside for this year and that could be used towards the, the motor graders. But it couldn't be used for a five year basis. Complicating this is this number right here, $262,500. That is the overall budget deficit that is built into this budget. If you look and pay on line 32, $570,000. That is, the, that is the balance that's brought forward from other budgets. And so if we spent every line item on this budget, every line item down to zero, which we never do, we would have a deficit of 262,500. But being we don't spend it down, we take then that excess money and we put it over to the line 32, which is the reserve. It should say reserve. It used to be labeled for um, federal aid. Is that correct, Wayne? That is the down payment, that's the 25% that we will use in matching funds when we get federal money for paving roads and things like that. So although that money appears to be a liquid asset, it really isn't. It is, it is designed for something else. The reason it's in this budget is because the state revamped their budget guidelines and moved all three of our budgets into one. So with that said, we're kind of at a loss on how to move forward with this. The township has a big stake in this thing. They, uh, of the blade usage, and now this is, this is assuming 800 hours a year, um, that's pretty well in par. We're going to end up with an average of about 4,000 hours per machine after five years. That equates to 800 hours per year. If you use, using 2017's township payments, the total payments divided by the hourly rate, we come out with this. So the township uses the blades 41% of the time, private industry 1% um, of the time, a little bit less than one actually, and the county 58% of the time. Wayne will talk later about the, the rates on this and, and possible solutions to this. Um, this is just a, a, a minor list of the po possible solutions. We're hoping after meeting a few people that we get more ideas here. Um, because none, none of these, uh, of, of course, of course, if, if we could move forward with under the current staffing and current machines by leasing new machines, that would probably be preferable. It just seems like a stretch to try to get there without depriving other parts of the road township, the road budget, from what we might need in the future. If the state's not going to give us money, we're going to have to be able to gravel and do all the other things that are necessary in the road budget and without the state stepping in to help us, <clears throat> that looks undoable. Or at least at least, at least it will make it, it will, it will be harder to do. Um, maybe Wayne should maybe Wayne should uh, address you now and then, and then I think after that there is if you have time to digest some of this, I think questions will probably be the easiest way to try to arrive at some kind of path forward with this. And there will be no path forward reached today, I don't believe. It's just trying to, trying
trying to figure out what the possible options are. Um, if you have any questions for me, fine, or I can wait until afterwards after Wayne gets done and they can address them to any of the commission. Wayne? Just wait until Wayne's done. Are we utilizing the maintainers to the best of our lives? Well, could we do, by any more of employee hours, could we do it for three instead of four? Um, in the county? I'll, I'll say I'll say that I'll say that the current usage over the five-year period, if we end up with approximately four thousand hours, if we end up act, actually about eight hundred hours per year, we're going to end up a little short of the lease. These were six thousand hour leases per machine. Uh, right now, we have one machine with forty-five hundred and a couple of them with thirty-eight, one with thirty-four. Is that right? So if the winter goes through like this and, and into next spring, we'll probably end up somewhere around 4,000 hours per machine, which is 2,000 hours short. Now that isn't always gonna happen in a five year period, but, but it did this five year period. So the answer is yes, could you, keep, could you keep the same number of employees? And I can't speak to the logistics of it, but on paper, could you keep the same number of employees and operate less machines? Yes, you could. That, that could certainly be done. Um, logistically, that would be way up for way to answer that question. But, yes. Um, the machines run in the summertime, if I'm correct, four days a week? Okay. And, yeah, yeah, four ten hours. So, so using, yeah, so, so using a scenario, that's, that's 40 hours per machine per week you could actually go and have run two machines and do it, still get the $40, still time the employees out using two machines, there'd be enough time during the, in the summertime to do that. So if you wanted to greatly expand the work schedule, yes, you could do that. that again, that, that's, all, that's all a management issue really, and how, how that would be arrived at. That's, that's not for the commission really to decide. We're, we're governance, we're, we, we're, we take care of the, the, supposedly take care of the money part of it. The actual daily operations and how that's implemented is, is my um, And I'm certainly Wayne's workable with, with any of that. It's just, just, it would be nice if we didn't have to explore all these options, but we do. And we are responsible to the, to the taxpayers, and the taxpayers should pay uh, not one dime more than is necessary for the services that are rendered. And so here we are. Any other questions? That's it. I feel like a preacher here. <laughs> <laughs> I did total up, total up the hours of every, every machine. 2017, and I got the county hours of 1,630. 2017. Okay, yeah, that's kind of reflected in here. Right? Percentage. Yeah, percentage much, yep. 1,196 hours for the townships. And then I just said 21.5, but I think it's more than that in private individuals. Um, what we see, you know, if we had to cut to three graders, there's going to be some suffering as far as getting the roads open in the wintertime. Uh, we don't quite understand yet how we're going to be able to do as many miles on the east side of one water grader. We may have to, you know, reorganize. But take a little longer every time. Of course, this winter has been excellent. We can't always judge by this winter. We remember 96, 97, 2010, 2011, and uh, so on. So, um, we look at the budget again, like I said, is we could alter it around. And of course, next year, then instead of a large payment, it would be. This one, or around that, could be lower by 25%. Yeah. So 
then it would be manageable. I mean, you know, this year we budgeted uh, 130,000 for gravel. The last uh, fall we put up, let's see, about three piles of gravel all over the county. Maybe everybody can't hear me. And so we have gravel up. We have uh, 20,260 yards of the Gary Christensen pit by Binford. We have 13,624 cubic yards at the Russell pit and 19,981 cubic yards <coughs> at the Claire River Arts. And all that gravel has been paid for. We don't have to purchase much, if any, this 2018. Um, so that's why we think we can use that, at least part of that gravel. And the outside contractor, last year I also budgeted 150000 We didn't spend anything out of that. And this year again, we budgeted 150000 That's usually used when we do a federal aid project, because we have to share 19.3% local match with the federal money. Um, so that could be almost eliminated, because we aren't going to do any federal aid projects, I don't think, for a number of years, because uh, unless Trump gives us a whole bunch of money, but the federal money coming to Bismarck that they keep for us to do projects is only $72,400 a year. And when we overlaid the Sutton Road, we spent all that we had, and we borrowed ahead two years. So we had to pay back the money that was coming in from Washington comes into the state to repay that for any federal aid projects. Um, yes, we got in this kind of a predicament because of that. Well, there was a bidding war, of course, between two contractors last time in 2013 when we got new border graders. And <clears throat> so, the one outfit was quite a bit higher than the other one, and he only bid for two years. So then Mr. was asked to come back after lunch at 2.30 and come up with a new bid for, four, for five years. And so they did. And the one came in at $72,400, and we did pay $98,960 for years on lease. So of course we were happy to jump at that we thought because now we're saving twenty some thousand dollars a year on that. Only problem is it didn't go into this. Right. The six hundred and seventy thousand. <clears throat> so what we when we turn these machines back in again, then the machines will take care of that residual amount of the six hundred and seventy thousand. So then we start over on a new Lease. We haven't determined exactly what the price is going to be yet. <coughs> we, uh, I think it's been going quite well the way we've been doing it. We have four motor graders and they're divided over the, the county. And uh, a few years ago, we, some other counties too had done the study that showed that by working four 10 hour days, we could get more miles versus five eights, because you have less drive time back and forth out to the project. <coughs> um, I talked, I called the uh, surrounding counties around us to find out what they were charging for uh, lading townships, and I got many different answers. Steel County charges $100 an hour for townships. Snow plowing, $95 an hour in flavor. Barnes County, $95 and $95. Nelson County, $75 and $75. <clears throat> I said, why don't you raise that up? 
commissioners, he said. They want to keep them both. So Susskind County is $110 an hour for snow plow and $95 for blading. Foster County is $75 for both, and he wants to go to $80 this spring or summer. And then I found out from uh, Aaron Chapman Blading that he charges $105 an hour for snow plowing and $95 an hour for blading. That's the part of the So we were thinking possibly we could increase the hourly rate. If we increased it by $20, I think it would bring in a little over 20,000. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So that's one way we could increase it. And of course, if you keep calling for blading, that would be wonderful. Call more. <laughs> <laughs> some people are on a rotation, so they're automatically bladed, but some are on a call basis, so you have to call and let us know. So but I think everybody uh, lays all their roads twice a year probably. I think that's part of the agreement with the state that uh, in order to collect money for that, you have to lay them so often. Like that on our sheet here. Uh, and we've laid 480 miles of township road. There's two townships that are told about 35 miles that we don't blade. For 45 miles. So, so but the rest of the township is 480 miles that we blade. We don't snow plow that much. How many miles of county road went? I can't remember. <coughs> we have uh, we have a county map right here. 256. We have 203 yards or miles of gravel. Three, okay. And 39 miles of asphalt. And nowadays, you know, with all the bigger traffic, the heavier traffic, it takes more blading for our county roads. I added up all the hours that I had in my ledger sheets over the 2017 and the total of 1,630 hours on the county system. <clears throat> I don't know how we would exactly work that. Wayne, how many miles of gravel do you have coming? 203. Thirty-nine of uh, asphalt. Thirty-nine of asphalt. Two hundred three of gravel. There's uh, ninety-nine point five of federal aid system gravel, and uh, one hundred three point five of non-FAS. Okay. So for some in winter time, we follow. All of that, of course. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so. mm -hmm. How many miles of the township system do you snow plow? Uh -huh. How many miles of the township system gets plowed? I don't know. <coughs> it's <coughs> probably two thirds of that would be plowed, maybe. Yeah. The rest is minimum maintenance. Yeah. Townships. Yeah. A lot of people that are on vacation. Yeah. 
Yeah, how many of those utilize the rotation? I don't know. Five. Jake's got five. Jim's got four. I think Jeff. Yeah, four that uh, you can just play at any time. Three. Three. Matt, none? I don't think so. I think we're on the call. Yeah, it's very important to keep playing them more often because I can see that last year we were getting wrong as often. And by the end of the fall, the roads are getting narrow because you want to bring all that grass and weed in. Still coming in. It's fifty dollars. Yeah. And so I know one township was talking about spring. Like some of those men maintenance ones that you don't play every time. <coughs> Try to keep the weeds down, grass down, the middle anyway. So. Can I comment on that, Wayne? Yeah. In, in response to Wayne's question here, and, and the being able, to, the being on schedule is very good. That's a very good point. If we could put these on a schedule, we would save time. What Wayne's talking about is that we're blading one township and we get to the end of the township line and we have to stop there. If we could just keep going on right on through rather than coming back two days later, it would really increase the efficiency of the, of the motor graders. Um, but here, here's a, a look at, right now, under our current summertime schedule, we put 160 hours per week on all four machines, total. We do that in four days. We can go to two machines, run three 13-hour shifts, and do the same amount of work. We would have six days of coverage now. Now instead of being out on the, on the roads for four days a week, we'd be out on the roads for six days a week. And we would just run two shifts. So there are two, two blades, we'd keep all of our employees, they'd work three 13-hour days, and it would be off for the remainder of the week. Uh, it utilize you cut your, your blade payments. You could do new blades and it would work. Um, you would cut the payments in half. You keep the same employees, which I, I believe is important. And you would more, you would better utilize your equipment. Right now we're gonna, sh we're gonna come up short. We have $6,000 leases on these machines. We're gonna turn them back with only $4,000 on them. Which means we, and we don't get any credit for those hours not used. Which means we paid for two thousand dollars on each machine, or going to that we didn't use. What we paid for was just the one. No, but what we paid for weren't the up to six thousand. No, but we paid for six thousand dollar leases. That's that's where that's the, the lease is just based upon that three hundred thousand. What's that? The lease is based on the the cost of a piece of equipment, and then they add the warranty on for each year. No, if in one hour over six thousand dollars, we'll pay more. Right. Right. So that means that any hour under that, we don't we pay for also. Then, then, nevertheless, just that's because good. just like when we asked, okay, let's extend this lease for two more years. Yep. The company said they want one hundred and twenty thousand a year to extend the lease for these genres that we have. They they, they now we're paying seventy two thousand, and we can only warrant you for two more years, and then there wouldn't be any warranty. And you have to put a certain amount of hours on. Well, here, right? That hours is just protection so that you don't go over. We could have leased them for 4,000 hours for five years, but once you went over that 4,000 hours, then you're paying $45 an hour. Yeah, we would have paid less if we were leasing for 4,000 hours rather than 6,000 hours. Because of the 15,000 right. or so more. So, so that, that's, that's one hour. Here, here's the problem with this thing. It's right here. Without even doing anything with the blades, this is a deficit that's built into this road budget. That no matter, and, that, and we have to decrease this, or we're gonna decrease the line number 32. Line 32 is, is the rep reserve, and that's used for, for federal aid roads. Again, if we spend every line in here, we're gonna come up short this much, and it's gonna decrease that 570,000 by the 262. We can't have that happen. So irregardless of what we do with these graders, we're gonna to have to cut out $262,000 out of this budget every year. This budget is $262,000 over. Yes, it is, Wayne. 
what is the liabilities of one million seven hundred and seventy three thousand? Isn't that money that still is uh, part of the testing part of the county? No, no way. But that, the, money, the, the money that's carried over gets rolled into this 570 right here. Into the 570. No, no, that's, that's the Dakota programs. That doesn't clear out every year. This is the budget right here. Yeah, well, okay, this is the fund. No. <laughs> Wayne, it is, it is technically in the fund. It came to that 570. This is about, you put forward this budget, not us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so no, we, we, before that. well, we didn't disagree with this budget. You put forward this budget and we're just trying to work within it. Okay, so right now, if we spend every dollar there, we would have to make up this 2625 because we cannot have a deficit budget. It would decrease at 570 by the 262. So the, our actual deficit, if we do brand new graders, it's four hundred thousand dollars. There's possible solutions to that. We just don't know what, how that affects everybody, and, and the county can't enter into a, into a situation where it can't, four years down the road, it can't make its commitments. It could be 160. It could be higher. Yeah. We had the uh, we had the RDO and Butler here. They gave us kind of a ballpark. They they didn't they don't want to bid on them until we're going to do something. But they kind of gave us a. And that's not the same amount of hours as right now. Presume, yeah. I think, I think Wayne so. was getting an estimate for seven years and seven thousand. I did, and it came out. Higher per year payment than I did if you went for five years. That's unexplainable. <laughs> <laughs> so, it lies the problem with all this? It, it's, that's why we need to have an actual bid so we know exactly the numbers we're, we're looking for. Okay. We can't suppose it's going to be this. We have to call for bids, and the commissions have every right to reject any and all the well, what I'm looking at is 180,000 for 1,200 hours approximately each year is what it should run is $150 an hour. You know, um, so I'm wondering, you know, if we can find a way to make that even, you know, whether, you know, the township comes up with some or, you know, to raise the township private, you know, everything should have to be raised a little bit to make it work, you know. Somehow. When we get to the possible <coughs> solutions, there, there are, there are, well, we did one of them already, going to two brand new blades. But there's also a possibility to buy all three of the blades we have and making this budget work pretty well as it is. How much of a repair bill are you going to have? Well, I don't know. The, Finley, you could have thousands of dollars of repair bill or get lucky and get by with a little nothing. Steel County runs two blades with a <laughs> one spare and they run their blades to fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, four blades now. I understood they're trading trading one in. Didn't trade it in, they just they kept the three, bought a new one. And they're using one now until the new one gets built. Or you'll give them one to use. Nothing at all. But they paid cash for it because they have cash. Yeah. And and so if we kept three lowest time blades we have. Right here. Right. I think I think we can probably we can probably have about a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar investment bunch of over five years. They, they would have four thousand hours on them, which is relatively low time, considering they, they think fifteen thousand hours is high time. We could do this and keep three of the blades. That would stay within this budget number. This shortfall would be gone. This could be dealt with on a year-to-year -year basis. And the hires and, and repairs we have to do is over and above. <coughs> we really have to spend probably six, seven, eight thousand dollars on tires and glass and things like that. Then you can go through the rest of the options up there. 
there's there's multiple options, and I'm sure there's more than more than that. Um, I don't believe it's fiscally possible to go forward with what we with buying with four new blades and being able to cover the costs that are going to be incurred to the township for maintenance of the town of, of, of the county for maintenance of the county going forward, considering that the state is not going to step back in with all the money that they're giving us. We put every bit of that money that the state gave us at $3.2 million, well, we've got $500,000 left, and that's going back into gravel, too. But we put every bit of it into gravel on these roads to try to build a reserve that way. Well, that had to be used for, <coughs> that had to be used for gravel, roads, or bridges. Right, yeah. We, to be used to be used right. No, but, but, it, but it certainly offset money that would have been used for gravel throughout the county. It, ought, it made it so we didn't have to spend it. They were spending it. They were paying for it. We would have been still putting on the 20,000 yards a year or so, uh, yeah. you know, not get very many miles done every year, but we still would have been in operation. Yeah. And, oh, yes, no doubt. And that's why we built up a gravel reserve. But when we don't have that, there's going to be at costs over and above of when we had it. summertime if, if we're putting if we have 160 hours of time that we put on the blades in the summertime with four blades we can do it with two blades now no doubt in, in the winter time that might be a problem I, I think we would have to add maybe a speed power or two which are relatively inexpensive well, we're already used right yeah yeah you got the uh, if money was no object I agree with you we would just go ahead and do it but but we're we're at the max mill levy we can't we can't Go any more bills? Where does the money come from? Well, if you take off the uh, outside contractor, you take off the building fund of hundred thousand. There you've got your two six, almost two six. I know, but that has to stay off forever. Yeah. So we'll, we won't maintain our we, we won't maintain our buildings as long as we can gravel. Well, they haven't been maintained. Well, I mean, I think we just put new doors in. We just put new windows in. We're sitting in a brand new facility here. Got a new roof. That's not going to Brand new roof on the brand new roof on your shop down there. Right? There's, there's. The problem is, if you get too few blades and it rains, you can't get out there and get over the roads timely enough so that you're not just pushing dust around by the time you get done. So if you do that. You almost have to have the availability of some contractor help in short windows, I think. Well, we have four days on the roads right now. We could have we could work we could have six days on the roads. I mean, which would expand. Right. Yeah. We work five days during the winter. Five eight hour days. And if there's a snowstorm, whatever comes on Thursday or Friday, we work Saturday and Sunday. And just continue right on to next week. Right. Contractor, is he going to be on the call all the time when the road washes out, call the road, river comes up, don't put barricades up and stuff? 24 hours a day, seven days a week? I don't think so. I think what you have right now is about the best here that you can get. I don't want to see any of my guys have to be working on Saturday or Sunday. It's not necessary. But that three shifts, talking about working Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and the next person working Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, Saturday and Sunday is pretty important 
time, I think, for people and their families and stuff. And I just want to be that person that makes them stay awake from their all evil. services that we need out okay. there. And we've caught some storms this year. We've had it delayed out at least four times already this winter. And we can live with a little bit slower service in the summertime, but not the wintertime. Um, we got kids that go to school just like we do here in Cooperstown. We got ambulances that gotta run. We got people that gotta get out to their jobs. Uh, so that service is pretty necessary. So we we end up waiting a day or two or three more for a blade. That's going to be a problem. Oh, I fully understand. It, it, it is where how are we going to do it and be financially sound? How do we do that? Well, figure it out because we need the service. <laughs> well, that's what we're trying to do. How how do we do it? We can't we can't charge the taxpayer any money. We, we're maxed out in the bills. There's I'm just telling you where we're well, I don't from a standpoint. We need the service out there. We, we, we need to be able to call on the county. We don't call on the county a lot, but we call on the county for the blame. Yeah. We are, because we are at an impasse, we don't know what to do. That's why you people are here, to try to, to, try to figure out a plan to get move us forward with this. Because we don't know what to do. We look at this, and what do we do? When you were guys were talking rotation, when you were guys are researching other counties, are any other other counties doing a rotation with their road crew? Or are they just working Monday through Friday? When you were talking to Sutton, Trail, Foster, Eddie? Um, not a rotation. Steel County works five tens in the summertime and four tens, and four tens in the winter, just the opposite of us. Her, her um, four eights and her five eights in the I can't remember what he told me now. Steel County has has six employees counting their road boss. Foster has five. Six, yeah, and we've got eight. Um, Blade wise about the same about the same. Um, so there's been and if you get to Trail County, they've got thirteen employees. It, it, it's really dependent on on the program they have. So. I was just wondering, schedule-wise, how we differed from the other counties. Yeah. Yeah. County, Sussman County did try that, keeping so many guys at home, half the crew or whatever, and then having the other come. Well, then we got a bad winter. They all had to come. So then they get away with that. I think Steel County only does six townships out of their 20. The rest of them are private contractors. Yeah, and we have two townships in Briggs County that are done by private contractors also, down in the southeastern corner. Yep. Well, I think they could put more hours on their blades. I think the blades, roads need to be bladed more than they are. I don't know if they just put the township go. <clears throat> oh, man, but they get pretty, boy, it's, it gets pretty narrow by fall. I know there's been times when we wish you guys would call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just go, just go. But if you just let us go on a location where we can just go in whenever it comes right. along. Yeah. But. <laughs> At forty-five thousand dollars a blade, working, putting eight hundred dollars on them with our labor cost, we got one hundred thirty-one dollars an hour before fuel and maintenance. That's what it's costing the county, and so we're charging seventy-five. No agents would be paid whether we were working or not. Yeah, that, that's the other. Whether we're out plowing or driving a truck or fixing a truck or whatever. That, that is the other problem, of course, is we're depending on the townships for work 
but in a year like this, we're not going to get hardly any any work on it. And so, so we're the colony is shouldering all the ownership costs of the blades. The good thing is that when we're not going off, we're saving money because we don't make money at seventy-five dollars a month right. or hundred. <laughs> we're not losing as much. Not even, you know, like you said, hundred thirty. So I will proceed. I would say the first move would be to get a natural number, and I would use 800 hours. If they're averaging 800 hours a week, have them do a, a, a five-year lease for 800 hours, yeah. and get a natural number, and then, then you can actually work with numbers that way. But it is going to be 20 dollars on either side of that, which isn't going to make a difference. That 180 is going to be with them. Well, we that's a that's a twelve hundred dollar lease, but according to Wayne, it's not that reducing dollars isn't going to reduce the lease payment. Well, and I, I understand what you're saying with you know the warranty type deal, but if you ask for an eight hundred dollars, for what we're doing right now, eight hundred dollars is two hundred twenty five dollars an hour. At twelve hundred dollars a year is one hundred fifty dollars an hour. That's a huge difference. You know, if we get an actual number, um, you know, then we got to stay at, you know, obviously that 800 hours or whatever they are per year. But, you know, that's. But you gotta, remember, you got to take that times four, the 180 dollars. So, so it's not it's not 150 dollars an hour. You got to take the 800 times. Divided by four. So it's 180,000. Divided by four machines. Four machines. Per, right. 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 So it's, so it's eight, so it's eight, eight, it's 3,200 hours. 180,000 divided by 3,200 hours. Okay. Yeah. That's Which, what I Yeah, just, you know, multiple four, you know. Yeah. But, you know, so you way divide, your, divide your 150 by four, and that's the number. Right. right. <coughs> so, you know, I don't know that. I guess to me that would be, you'd still, you know, if you're looking at 800 versus 1,200, I guess. If I'm going to make a decision, I actually have to have the actual numbers. Absolutely. You know, it, it just, because you start bidding against, you know, and there's no reason why they can't. I mean, a salesman will work their butt off to get, you know, a sale, I would think. You know, I, I know I just have a hard time working numbers without actual numbers. Yeah. But, I mean, take your budget and take, take this out of it. Take the budget, take this out of it, and then... And then use use 160 thousand. It, it doesn't work. John, are you saying you're going to have a 262 thousand shortfall every year? If we maintain the current expenditures and the current revenue. No, you won't. You only do that for the first year. No, no. If you look at the if you look at the budget, we have it out. Yeah. Okay, so the expenditures right now fall two hundred and sixty two thousand dollars short in this the way it is sits right now. The budget. The budget. That's why Wayne is saying we can cut out some things. Right. Yeah. If you spend every dime in it, that will happen. Right. If we don't spend any dime, that will every dime will. Yeah, that's what the I'm worst saying. case scenario. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. What can we cut out of here out of the expenditure side to you make don't it work? Spend it all every year. No, there's some of them we don't. Last year we didn't spend three hundred thousand of it, and that's why it went to the four five hundred and seventy thousand to try to because we don't have a line item anymore for the federal aid roads. So we take the old bridge and put it to this reserve number to try to build up um, the reserve for the federal aid roads. We used to have, remember have three budgets. We had to now the state required us to go to one. So it, it made it a little confusing looking at it. But that old bridge gets saved in the reserve number. To try to build that, and that 570 is a estimate, kind of. The 570 is an estimate. We right? haven't gotten the closing number from 2017 yet. No, we use we use the amount spent up until August, and then we prorated that forward. So the 570, I think, will be a little higher. It's typically about 20 percent higher. So yeah, that's. 
if it was in three different line items, if it was budget items, it would look different, but the end result is the same. We don't throw away the, the overage, it goes into that reserve. How long has it been since the Kelly's own mineral lakes or I don't Wait, remember. Wayne, how, how, how long have we been leasing waves? When was the last time we owned them? 90, 96? 80s. 80s? Probably 80s. 80s. 87. 87. started getting new releases. Because they're very well telling you that when they're all new? Doug. Finley, I guess. I talked to it. How long has it gone to leasing? There used to be more of the owners and stuff. I talked to a gentleman from out west in the county, and and he, uh, they were leasing. Now they're going back to ownership. I mean, they go back and forth. I don't, I don't know if that's. Yeah. Well, about ownership, so you can get a rotation. They're not buying all, you know, all of them one year. Kind of this scenario right here, owning three of the blades, would give us the ability to do just that, and then. Although they wouldn't be worth much when they got rid of, they'd be worth something. Yeah. It would start the process of building some equity back into the, into, into the program. The only thing nice about a lease is that when you look at numbers, you know what it's going to be. As you talked about before, with expenses, with uh, repairs, and those sorts of things. I think they had a transmission go out of one this year, and they estimated that would have been a $20,000 repair. Um, right. So you'd have to have also another line for estimated repairs or, or that sort of thing mm -hmm. into it and, and and build that, you know. Part of that lease price is, is warranty, like what yeah. you said. The warranty on this stuff, is, on these four blades, is 30 grand a year. So do you want to take some risk and not spend that 30,000? Or do you want to have elimin completely eliminate your risk and that's what it's going to cost to do it? Yeah. What is the warranty? Is it seventy five hundred dollars a year per machine? Seventy five hundred. Okay. And I mean, you guys all own machinery. Do you do you take the risk, or do you yeah. pay the cost of the warranty? Okay. I mean, none of my machinery is under warranty anymore. I mean, that, that's that's a that's a heck of a premium to pay <laughs> when you may or may not have trouble. And I think these newer machines are more dependable than the old ones were. And you can self-insure it, basically, is what you're doing. Well, that's what you'd be doing that's if you didn't have doing. a warranty. You'd still pay that same amount, but you just have to probably self-insure. No, Charlie, you're, you're wrong there. These new machines aren't for the crown. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Because the old one you used to be able to repair. The new ones... The new ones are all electrical. Yeah, everything is... They're running from 100 degrees below to 100 degrees above. And you get all that electronic wiring and stuff sitting there with snow and ice hanging on it all the time. In years time, you're gonna have a lot of problems. Now there's new equipment, they're designed, there are more and more new equipment coming out that's designed, you can't repair it yourself. You have to have a certified mechanic come and fix it. Because they need certain special tools. No different than my truck. Yeah. <clears throat> but I'm not gonna go back to the 560. <laughs> <laughs> No, but that's what I'm getting at. The older yep. the machines get, you're going to have more and more problems with it. A lot of wiring. But that's something we'll have to decide when we get actual bids yeah, that's the, and that sort of thing. That's but the trade-off. We just brought it here today to, uh, to let you know. I mean, we've heard a lot of crazy rumors that uh, you know, the county isn't going to be operating anymore or whatever, and, and that isn't going to be so. We're still going to be blading roads, and we're still going to be doing these things uh, to the best of our ability. So, so is it possible that we you know we could work with the townships, and could the townships work with the way so we we get on a schedule? So that would be a big improvement, efficiency-wise. It would be a savings to the townships also because when you're there, you may as well do it. Even if you're only going to do it. If, if you say these roads are twice that you're going to blade those, let us know so we can, so Wayne can make a schedule and say if you're going to do it twice and what months do you want them done at and those sorts of things. All those little things like that would, would help budgeting, or not budgeting, but scheduling so a lot. 
And then, Wayne, what do you think the hourly rate needs to go to? Well, I was thinking the $95 an hour. That's short. Last time we did an increase was $50.09. And we were getting $66 an hour, then we went up to $75. And how many of the townships are on the, are at the end of their budget rope for road maintenance? How much of uh, how much of the township's budgets are are maxed out for blading? Is what he was asking. You know, are we? If we went to ninety five, would you be doing that much less blading? That's just what happened the last time. Yeah. We we did it. We cut it down because it went up. Sure. And then we put up a bunch of minimum maintenance signs. Sure. Sure. Puts us in a little bit of a pickle because then if we go renew leases on four machines and we raise the hourly rate so we can pay for them and we have half as much work to do, we made the wrong decision. Yeah. yeah. That's certified miles. You have to pay this for that. Yeah. In order to collect the gas tax. Yeah. You're supposed to blade them twice, aren't you? I think twice a year the to get the to qualify for the gas tax money. Right. You go over our, at least twice. <coughs> yeah. Yep. I think you're on rotation. Yeah. So nice you at least once a month. Uh, you know, sometimes there we're grabbing up in one area, you know, so we need a blade up there by the end of the day. Three does everybody kind of understand though the situation we're in as a as a county road crew and just uh, just helping a schedule a little bit I think would would do a lot also yes yeah. I guess one of the questions would be if you could raise it to 95 are we going to lose some of the servants? Because are you still going to drop a plate? I don't know if we're even at that point yet as far as where we're going to be. Um, I mean, that's the question I would like to know. Right. At that, at that point, if you're going to raise that rate, I'd like to know if we're still going to have the service or not. Right. <laughs> yeah, good, good, good point. Um, don't know. All I do know is that it takes 41% of the assets we have with four blades to take care of the townships. Now that would be more township <coughs> hours on those, on those maintainers if everybody was doing rotation. Because my secretary yes. here is that she would involve five times a year of raw rotation and rawness. So the ones of you that aren't on rotation, how many times are you having to blaze out during the summertime? How many times do you call for them? You do? I think everybody. <coughs> I think Tom Bell would like us out there every other week. <laughs> Is, is my any, any, any time 21 to 30 days, I think it should be mandatory. If you have a gravel road you want to do that, you have to maintain it. There are some townships that don't maintain at all. They don't want them out there. I mean, you have to maintain your roads or they get full of roads and they're all minimum maintenance roads. And there's some times that we can't get out there in 30 days. Certainly. Like this year, <clears throat> we did the state graveling project. Right. Well, you know, we spent like a week or two getting them roads ready. I mean, I was getting up there on County Road 2 up, you know, probably two weeks, week and a half. And then that this year, I had our gravel, our guys graveling up in my area. You know, we did 10, 10 miles of graveling on our own right. up there. You know, that kind of cuts off. I think this year, I think I made our own, my guys, four times, I think. And usually it's five. <clears throat> and if a guy had no graveling to do or nothing, you know, and if you're able to get going, you know, end of March till 
first of November, mm -hmm. you can get her own six. Mm -hmm. But you know, you got other stuff you got to do too. And if it never rained, then it wouldn't. Then you wouldn't be held up for three days. Or, leave them yeah. <laughs> so it's it's all a weather thing, just like what we're doing. And, and it is kind of a commitment issue, I, I guess. If if we're buying, the, if the county is buying the blades. We almost have to have to the commitment over the townships because a lot of the usage of those blades is township usage. The scenario that you know maybe maybe the townships don't get any money at all it coming going forward, and they don't have any money to hire blades out there. Well, now we still have the commitment to purchase or five-year commitment on those blades. We can't turn them back. So that's that's kind of the scenario. That is these the owner the usage is shared. The ownership's not. I think you can turn them back. Yeah, it'd be expensive. <laughs> At any time, I think I think there, it used to be leased for a year, but it was for five years. But it, was, it it has to be either if they needed five machines, they could or four machines, they could request them back. The lease has to be written that way because. Government can't commit for more than one budget cycle, like so they have to be able to. Right. There has to be that wording in the language in the lease. On that board up there, then that lease, the top top lease, that means seventy-two thousand. That's what we're currently paying for four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. total, total. Okay, and then the next one, the expected one, you think it's going to be one hundred eighty at least. This, this is the, this was because the equity we had in the machines we traded away in order for lower lease payments, in order to tab that money to use elsewhere in, in the in the road township in the road department budget. What's the equity of the four machines we have right now? None, zero. It, it, it's a true lease. So when they get turned back, not only is there no equity, at the end of the lease we have to pay seventy two thousand five hundred dollars to turn them back plus. Tires under 50% weight and glass and things like that, which won't amount to much. But it, this number will probably be $80,000. RDO claims are underwater on them. You know, if we can turn them back, we get $670,000 credit for that, just because that's the way the lease is written. They said they can't sell them for that much money. So even if you took those four blades, you'd be better off letting them take them to Fargo and then go buy them off their lot. Is all there explained it to us in this in the commission? That's what this number is about. This four hundred fifty thousand from looking online, it appears like those blades could probably be purchased for one hundred and fifty a piece, possibly. I mean, give or take. That four hundred fifty thousand is for one blade. Three. Three. The, the three. The three that's lowest. Right. The three blade. Three of the four blades we have now, and, and that's not that's not in stone. That's just from looking online, and here's what they're worth, and. and that would that would assume you're going to take the risk on the warranty. Yep. Because if you're going to buy, you can buy a two years warranty, but it's going to be thirty thousand dollars a year for the four machines. Right. Well, three machines would be twenty two thousand five hundred, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, but if you start off with using the old machines, the warranty is going to be like higher. Is it that more than what you're paying now? Sure. That's what they quoted us for two more years warranty if we extend the leases. Yep. Yeah. It looks like it looks like if you look at a machine right now that it's at this this age, and then you go back another five years, get back into a 2008 machine. It looks like the residual value on those, depending on hours, is somewhere in that 40 to 50 thousand dollar range. So even though what you might spend on warranty up front, you would reclaim on the backside by residual by owning the machines. So. I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of different ways to do this, and, and all of it entails, it, it's all risk basis against dollars put out. And where does that, where is that line? I don't know. What the appeal to taxpayers for humility? Is that possible? That is possible. For equipment or something? No, you, the way it looks in the century code, you can put it to a vote. To allow a capital purchase, I suppose. Yeah. It's like building this building. 
except for you and hope it passed. Only if this is a public bureau. <laughs> It'll be for communists. <laughs> no, that, I mean, that, to be fair, that is an option, I believe. As, long, as well as the rest of those are options. It's just, are they viable options? I, I don't know. We, we, need to, we, need to, we need to determine the ultimate need and what we can afford and what we're willing to sacrifice to get to what. When you guys have to report back to RDO or whatever to make, sure, to make the decision of whether we buy or keep or lease back? Or they uh, told me that they would have to know by uh, the first thing they made. The final lease payment is in May, and the turn back date is in August. So would it be possible? Of course, we don't know. We would have to get together first to find out exactly what we have. <laughs> We could get by this year, and then if we could vote, I would be willing to pay more for better service. Although I don't think anybody has a challenge with the legal job, as a personal individual. That's right. I don't get quite a lot of service in our township. I don't get because I live on a private drive. So. Oh. No, I, I don't think this. I don't think this is about. I don't think this is about the lack of services. It's about the the, the possibility of not being able to maintain the current service. I, I would say. And 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 I guess my priority would be, would be, if we have to make cuts, my priority would be to retain the employees, and reduce the equipment value. But that's just my personal. Take on this. If if there has to if there has to be some sacrifices made, I, I think the machines are capable of putting more hours, and no doubt no doubt it would put a burden on the employees. But at least we would retain everybody. Well, we did work uh, five ten hour days for many years. We got a few we overtime for a few hours. And, and I don't know how the how the three days a week, three hours a day would work. I mean, that'd be a long weekend for some people. It'd be a long day, though. It'd be a long day. Yeah, it's a long day. <coughs> yeah. so would have a lot of fuel to go for 15 hours a day. It wasn't in the wintertime, I suppose. There's many times we're calling for fuel at you know, noon, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And in the wintertime, you want to have your... We, we usually have our machines back in the shop by 4.30 because Wayne has seen it, Jim's seen it, I've seen it, you know. Get if you out. start getting close dark, towards dark, or you're working in dark, like a 13 hour day, that's when all your trouble starts. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. And, and maybe wintertime isn't when we do that. Maybe it would be summertime hours for the roads, and maybe wintertime would be a combination of the blades and maybe one more speed ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you were to try and do two shifts, no, not in the wintertime. That, was, winter time. that was wasn't the intent there. Part of the call is going to be sitting there for three days before. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> no, that wasn't the intent. It was yeah. probably one, probably two guys running the speed plow and two running yeah. the, the, the motor graders where a speed plow wouldn't do it. it. It would take some planning and take, it would take some, it would be a little bit of work to do it, but I think it would be workable. But no, not in the, just in the, in the long summer days. There isn't too many townships in the wintertime that want to snow plow a truck either. A lot of them prefer a maintainer so they can get the snow off the shoulder of the road. Yeah. No, I, I fully <coughs> agree the status quo is what we what would be preferable, but if, if that isn't, what's the next best equation? And it all depends how much snow you get. Mm -hmm. A little bit of snow, the truck works great. You get a lot of snow, then you kind of got to go with the truck first, get it out as far as you can with the ditch, and then flip the lip with the uh, with the maintainer. I'm setting on speed trucks. I mean, are they... Well, one thing about a truck, at least what I've, what I've talked with some of the operators, is that uh, they're a lot easier to maintain 
You know, a truck is a lot easier and you cover a lot more miles in a day with a truck than you can with a maintainer. Now, you're talking about two different types of work though, too. All right, but some of these township roads, I mean, if you had a good speed plow, I mean, if you got three inches of snow, yeah. you just hit them, open them, so they're clear for buses and mail routes and ambulance and whatever, and then every, I mean, you get dumped on and bring the blade in and wing it out. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, it, I we can talk about all, we can talk, sit and talk about all the different kind of options that are gonna come up, but as Wayne says, we get a real bad winter, you know, and we hate the, we hate to buy equipment for the worst of case scenario. Can't do it. Because if it happens, you know, you, you're, when it doesn't happen, you're still paying for it. Has anyone checked on, other than buying what we have, or buying other used? Other yeah. Other used plates? Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I've looked on some of these websites. But so they're all <laughs> still in that I, same I, price range. Yep. I mean, I, I just... Very, the guys that run the maintainers, do you have a preference? Would you rather have cat blades or would you rather have John Deere's or is it a horse apiece? I'm a wheel man, so cat, cat don't make steering wheels, so yeah. Deer. yeah. Do you think that they're easier to run with steering wheels then, I take it, than this thing? I like it. I yeah. The cat and, you know, yeah. No, I'm, I'm the only one that's got a joystick. And the main reason I wanted it because my shop isn't heated and neither is a Bedford one. And the deers, they collect moisture in the bottom of the control belt and pretty soon in the cold space, your wind controls or blade that controls freeze up on you. They've got a cover on them. You gotta take that off and leave them insulated. You gotta take the bottom of that valve off and let the like this coming crap on them after that you keep on again. So then they got me this electronic one, the electric belt, no problem. Then one of the things go with it, I can use the one that will have the steer with and I just got acclimated to it and I don't have a problem with it. I really like it in the summertime doing slow stuff. So that's a deer machine too, just yeah. a different mm -hmm. control pad. And that's what the heck of it is, it's, it's a more costly machine over these other ones too. Sure. Yeah, you're talking about cheaper machines out there there, there probably are. But I think we, I think that we probably use the fact that our cheaper machines to leverage John Deere or leverage yeah. RDO to <coughs> purchase on these machines at a similar price because we have experience with these machines. <coughs> Mars Pony has different I know they've got one what the heck is it a gallon? I don't even gallon what can they call that. It's, it's, easy, easy. Isn't it? it's not even a champion anymore. It's something else. And the poor guy that's running, he's the youngest guy in the totem pole and nobody else likes him, so he's the only guy. We tried one out a few years ago. I was turning it on the top of the road and it would kill every time I went to put it in the next gear to go for it again. So I said, how do you like what that go for you? I said, well, <coughs> mine doesn't do this. So I mean, there's little quirks in all these, but deer and cat are the two best. Uh, anyway, we make the best problem. So is with all the used ones too that are again what do you do what do you warranty yourself with or how much do you how much do you keep in money for repairs I mean where you get the cash for that too I mean, it's still the same deal how much cheaper would it be if we did four wheel drive ones instead of six I don't know I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. Can you operate? I mean, we don't run the roads. Uh, how would you feel about that, the guys that are running the blades? Some of you have run two four-wheelers. Well, we could take a blade out to the ski toe and just leave it in four-wheel drive and not six-wheel drive. It's a little interesting. For many years, though, we only had one. Yeah, we always had only one. had one six-wheel drive, in the river. and that was in that river bottom there. The other three were the four-wheel drive. Oh, right. no, we, had, we had two. Yeah, we have two. Then one Sutton and then... Okay, that's before I started to help. This one Allen and up over here. I just don't know if that'd be cheaper or not. I don't know how much difference. I don't know what that adds to If nothing else, it would bound to be a lot less maintenance. Because you don't, you have one less axle you're cranking and trying to turn. Just like anything else. The newer ones have been better with the front wheel drives, I think, than what... When we first started, yeah. the six wheel drive was a disaster. 
Because yeah. they had constant problems with the cats. Hydraulics. Kept blowing their the wheels apart, yeah. You know. How would it affect our, our uh, operations as far as a, a six wheel to, to a four wheel if we to be, rebuild roads and those sorts of things? That's where you want it. That's where you need the six wheel. Mm -hmm. Even taking yeah. semis of dump for gravel and yep. you know, put in the wind roll to yep. utilize it. Yep. I mean, you can kick that out of six wheel drive and you notice the difference right now. It, it turns the machine or you spin off? Yeah, it physically. It does. I don't want I mean, I yeah. don't take my tractor out front wheel, so it's supposed to be in the wintertime. <laughs> What would happen if you leased the four machines we got back over a five-year period? They will be two them. more years on a warranty, and they won't lease them after if we don't pay for the warranty. So we can go two more years, but then it's sixty thousand dollars for the warranty for two years, and then I don't remember what the lease rate was to you. Yeah, the payment was one hundred twenty thousand a year yeah. with the with the warranty. That included the warranty. So the, the annual would go up to ninety, and then a thirty thousand dollars. It, it appeared like they were trying, they were using their residual value of these machines. So they were trying to, they know they're underwater, but leasing them back to us, they're trying to reclaim They're trying to get some of that back. Some of that back. So you'd be better off. I mean, I, I think you'd eventually get to, to a, what the price of these machines is by leveraging them against other machines. But I, I tried to leave with the lease, I don't think it would work well. Did they, but, ever, did they ever, or do you ever come back to the price? I think we are the members that are on these machines at the front lift and the soil equipment. Just getting a big prayer machine. No, we haven't. We, we haven't got that far, have we? Just the bare machines. These these were trading the, the wings and blades and, and rippers and everything. Yeah. They, in order to get rid of our <coughs> residual paint, you have right. to trim that. Everything's got to go yeah. stuff on it. Other than other than you have to buy that equipment. Yeah, then you got to go buy it back. Yeah, so <clears throat> that's kind of another advantage to try to buy these machines. Even if we don't keep them for right. five years, now you now you have something again to work with. Again, the risk the risk is the risk is the maintenance. But a four thousand dollar machine in, in the life of a maintainer, especially the the use we we're not we don't need on them. The, the chances of all four of them losing a transmission or an engine are, are pretty low, I believe. What about buying three of them in a deal with Gilbertson or some other contractor? Well, that's that's up on the board. You know, all all of these are options. You know, you, you could put out contracts, and you could have some or, or all of that or none of it. With Tommy and Tim are constantly buying stuff. Yeah. There's there's just there's just countless options on this. It's just what is what is well, that's not my, you know my machine is one of the most hours and it's that highest payment too. Well I I let that one well these three guys keep theirs and find me something else, you know. Well, do you do you believe that that no doubt it would be it would be a change and it might be an imposition, but do you believe we could get the work done with four operators and three machines and and the three people we still have working in the shop? Well, how do you would all of us be on the thirty-six hours or however you were? No, how no? That, that was just one. That was just one scenario. I mean, yeah. could could we could we stagger? The workforce in order to keep those blades out there, three blades working 160 hours a week, and get the work done. Is there is is that a possibility? I don't know. We've got see, we've got three guys graveling or whatever they're doing. Or are we going to have one machine falling on gravel wherever, and then the other three guys? Again, I, I I'm not involved in the data. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, I don't. I really don't know how it works. Like we don't get you. Uh, with the four four blades now, you know, like say I got like Lenora calls in, you know, and uh, hey, we just put a culvert in Thursday. You know, can you get that blade over? Right. You know, little things like that. Now, say we got the one machine running out of Cooper, 
he's gone by wall, you know. Mm -hmm. Are you going to pick up and dead head up there and waste time? You know, I mean, it's you know little things like that yeah. that we're going to miss. You know, hey, we got a couple loads of gravel here. Can you lay it down. And just look, I don't know. All that three machines is going to go. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I, no doubt it's going to cause an inconvenience, but is the inconvenience <coughs> worth the trade-off as far as as far as making this more fit a budget? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the trade-off. I'd feel more comfortable owning them and putting less hours on than I do about leasing them and putting not enough hours on because that just yeah. drives the cost to the ceiling. And if you own them and you don't put as many hours on them as you thought you were going to, you can keep them like you're doing them. You know, it just, you can control your cost better that way. Well, then we need some more answers from our dealers. Right. Oh, so I, I sorry. Yeah. You know, the lease payments you're buying half the machine. Yeah. The residual's half. And so, you, so, Steel County, for instance, they've got a 2007 and 2008, is that right? They like said a 7 and 9. 7 and 9. And a so, 14 and they're trading I think they're sound like they're trading one of them out and getting an 18 yeah. that's what I understood from yeah. long-term financial health of the road department if we could get to a position where we could have an ownership stake in these machines we would be far better off <clears throat> if that's possible so yeah <clears throat> that's what it caused from the thing in the first place back when I started in 82 was one of the machines I was running in 1960. And then I graduated up to 62 or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then we were at the start breaking on the one in the interest with the moving one. That's what, it was just stuff like that. They ran them too long. Yeah. yeah. Too far they they weren't worth nothing. Yeah. Then you back to Dwayne's argument where if you own them and you trade one off, and once in a while and you don't end up in the pickle where you got by the bullet on the whole fleet. Right? It's still it's, it's still lending money every year. Right? Stagger the absolutely stagger the rotation. But let's like say in the, in the case of a slow window we don't put many hours on that that extends the life of the machine one exactly. year also. Exactly. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's <laughs> Any other questions or Randy? Oh, yeah. You know, I think if you listen to our our the our the men of that work in the road department, they're very concerned about keeping the service that they have. And uh, we're very thankful for having That's all I have. Questions? I mean, one comment is pretty important to keep that or late through the That's my thought. Well, I, no. you, you can work it out. Right. I, I no I that that is the ultimate goal. That was, that was just one, you know, you could split it to you go six and a half hours, but, you know, work, each person work half a day, too. So there's many different ways to do it. It just, again, there's there's hundreds of scenarios. It's just, we got to arrive at one that is the best fit here. There's still one guy that might have to be the six no, no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, 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 and probably one of the non-weight operators would have to be there in case if they needed something from the shop. I mean, yeah, it, it's not going to be the same as it is. Find, find the money, and it, we can buy five blades. <laughs> but <laughs> there's. <laughs> Yeah. 
And, and here we are again, just because of the... I couldn't believe that they've drawn up that much. Right. You know, I should have checked more before I set the meeting budget last July. I put in $110,000 for the equipment budget. Six hundred and eighty-three miles. And it should have been at least 180. Paid the 72 and had 100. Yeah. You know, I think he said but, 39 miles. Yeah. Nobody really, as far as the, the uh, equipment operators want, or the equipment companies want to give you a firm number and tell you actually ask for a Bids. quote for bids and it should be open on this day. And then yeah. So everybody doesn't say, oh, he's going to bid that out. Yeah. Unless you can open them up for bids again. Lower. That's what you'd end up doing if you didn't like them. You'd have to throw them all in the garbage and start over yes. again. Yes. Okay. Anybody else have any questions or comments? I think you're going to find that the costs are going to accelerate the rate you're going up. I don't think that you can get to the bottom line without adding it without I'm afraid you're right about that's going to have to be a piece of the puzzle I think I mean there's it's going to take more than one thing to make this thing work but I, I think you're probably accurate that that's going to have to be one of them yeah but more so but we can't go I don't think we can go to $150 an hour mm -hmm. I mean I, even if that's what they cost all in that's well, it, it kind of depends on Garfield what, <laughs> what we end up doing for the, with the blades. Because um, if, if we went and leased four new ones at $180,000 and put $3,200 on them, um, it's going to be 100 bucks plus fuel and maintenance. <coughs> If you figure a half a man and, and that cost of that that lease at thirty two hundred dollars. The the biggest I don't think the biggest thing is the hourly rate, I think it's the commitment. The 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 commitment to usage. Right. Right. But they can only commit to what their budget will allow too. But I mean that that is the point. So it, it, what's yes. that? It, right, it goes both ways. Commitment is a two-way street here. Oh, exactly. No, I'm talking about commitment of ownership. So if if 41 percent of the of the blades it no, is it goes both ways. Committed. Both ways. Yep. Yeah, it does. But right now it, it really doesn't because we, we're it's fine the way it is right now. But if we commit, the county commits, and then the townships have to lower the usage rate. That lowers the amount of money coming into the county, which then puts a bigger burden. No, I mean, Richard just wants to make sure he has the same level of service if the yep. given, that, that was the, yep. Yep. the give and take, right? But that's what an hourly rate does. <clears throat> you pay by the hour, so yeah. yeah. But if your costs, your hourly costs go up and you can't afford that much, you're going to use less and it's going to be a wash. Yep. So. Yep. But if the townships use, use them more, you make money, how many more hours can you put? No, I, you there, know, there is room for running, running over the road more often. And I'm not so yeah, sure. Just take Jeff, for instance, he's been wondering what to do. I mean, but he's gone over his county road so much, and then the townships, some don't. But but Dwayne indicated that, but uh, Rosendahl indicated that yeah. they don't get them as much as they'd like. Yeah, we do more. We do both. <laughs> but let's go ahead. So can you no, get, can call. you <laughs> can you just get on? The, <laughs> can they put you on the schedule? That's what Wayne's asking. So that when they're out there, they yeah. can do the yeah. townships. Yeah. I mean, we should communicate so we get. Yep. So we know what we want for so many pass of the year. And some of these roads we only go over twice. That's just the way it is. 
That'd be a great deal is if you can buy your township meeting coming up here in March or April. Or March. You could have a map made up and say we want this plated every time you're there. You can. Can we have a schedule of like when you would be estimating to arrive at each township? Because yeah. I mean, that's a whole, you guys want us to schedule with you, but you guys also have to let us know when you're in the area or when you're planning to be out there too. That can change a lot. It's all weather. Or whatever happens. And the other thing, I mean, every time we're there, just because it's convenient, we don't we don't want four times in June, and then right. not every, every, every year. thirty days. <laughs> every thirty days. Yeah, mm -hmm. that'd be just great. And the way it has to be no scheduling. It's every thirty yeah. days, or when they can get there. All this communication just. Every 30 days, if every township, I've drove on some of the roads that have been maintained twice two more. Yep. They could use two more times. Don't you remember? Every 30 days. Don't you remember the state boy that came out last year, and he said we shouldn't be maintaining those roads as often as we are unless it rains and you make a rut and you're supposed to do it just within a, so many hours of a rain and all that sort of deal. That yeah, worked that out looks real good well. on paper, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Go back to each township having a horse grader. Yeah. Still got one. And so on, if the road gets screwed up, go redo it. But I think the maintainers need to be running when the roads are too wet in order to let it be on too wet. But our priority, of course, is to do the county roads. That hasn't been like the rain, you know, we would be doing that. It's probably what's the schedule for keeping the county roads? I know the county roads are supposed to be done first, but what's your location for the county roads? Right in line, we'll dump it. Start with the county roads. So, how many times do they play in a month the county roads? Well, probably once. Once? Hopefully. Right. Yeah. So, so, Wayne, what does it cost per hour to run a, a, a maintainer? I've never figured that out. You have to have your what you're paying for the variable cost yeah. and your fuel and your. <clears throat> my my point is, is my point is, are we charging enough to? to yeah. Okay, so more more hours doesn't solve this problem. It makes it worse. If we're losing, if, if, if it's costing money to have Malta because we're not charging enough, more hours will solve this problem. That would be have to have more mm -hmm. money. Right. It, it, won't, it won't make the problem worse. Because a lot of, most of the costs are fixed, John. You know? If you can charge $100 an hour, you're not going to spend that on fuel maintenance. You're, no. you're decreasing the cost of ownership of those blades, even if you are overall not paying for the man in the, in the machine. I think I still think you're better off running on more hours. You yeah. still lose money, but you lose less. Yeah. I mean, you're you're getting some. You don't want some because then your fixed costs are. You're, you're talking about running the same old machines. I'm talking about it if, if they're not used, it fixes less machines. Then oh yeah, <laughs> I guess so. So the, for four machines, if we use a hundred fifty thousand dollar buyback, then the cost would be one hundred forty. And that might be that might be on a stretch doable. Buying those four machines up. I mean that's that's just hypothetical. And that's another thing we haven't done. It, we're just making assumptions on interest rates and things like that. If if we went to Kinetic Leasing or someplace and said, okay, we want to at least purchase these machines, and we're going to buy them off the lot after we turn them back in. I, I think a municipal lease purchase would be cheaper than that, but we don't know that for sure, so we don't dare say it too loud. Most of the time they are, because of their, the interest income is tax-free to the entity that's holding the paper. <clears throat> Arnie, what do you think? You've been in, you've been in this before. What what do you think? What what's your suggestion? Well, it might not be quite as bad as you think. 
We have 110,000 equipment budget. I don't know what else you're expecting to buy. 72,000 of that's going to go to that last lease payment. Okay, well, that's going to be, that's going to be for this next year. It's not going to be for you to that budget every single year. Yeah. It'll be, there, yeah, there's only one of those left. Mm -hmm. You put more hours on these machines and you're losing so much an hour, you're going to lose less per hour and put more hours on the machines. If you're paying the same for the lease, no, oh, yeah, that's you're correct. You're going to be paying the extra operator, so your price mm -hmm. per hour is going to go down. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. That's how we arrived at two to three blades instead of four. Trying to, I mean, not, not, we didn't arrive there, but that's why we considered it just to try to roll that, those different scenarios, and see what it does for the in the overall cost. The summertime stuff. <clears throat> oftentimes, uh, you know, I, I know this is. You know what vacation time comes in this too. And everybody's on vacation. Right. Other times that's in the summer. So we call them on vacation and then the next two weeks they're on uh County. fixing road somebody else. So it isn't so easy for those guys to get around. They did stuff. They're getting all everything on the point. You get it every thirty days, it doesn't work on our way. <clears throat> so it's gonna be tough to go less machines and get uh, get the job done with some major, major uh <laughs> work schedules. Yeah, with maintaining the same work schedule, it wouldn't be. But you can still put the machine, you can still put as many hours out there in the county with less machines. They can still be on the roads the same amount of hours. You just have to expand the work day. Yeah, you have to totally change. And expand the work week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Four days, six days. But I mean, that, that's just an option. There's not. You can better utilize the machines. They, then they might have the six thousand dollars on them and turn them back <coughs> The snow will definitely be a problem as you talked about already, because I think they were more time anyway than this big snowstorm. So that will be the issue there. That's what this whole meeting is about, is lack of money. I think there's a little <laughs> bit of grant money available to switch to Tier 4. Yeah. But it's insignificant, and it's statewide. And you don't want to do that? No. <laughs> Without the lack of, fin of finances, this would be taking place, which is why they would have a new blade show up here and go on board. That is the case. And the fact that the county doesn't have the ability to go into debt. <laughs> well, a mill right now is worth twenty thousand dollars. So in order to make this thing work out, if you're, you you would have to raise it. Five mills would probably do it. Four mills, five mills. So we're at one. We're at the maximum right now, which is 100, and, which is 30 mills. mills. And so you, if you'd have to go to 35 mills, which would give you 700,000 rather than 600. But I don't think you'd go to 35 mills forever, could you? It wouldn't it have to be some kind of capital purchase? Because we're already at the maximum. We've already voted twice to raise it five mills, right? Yeah, but the, the limit imposed by the legislature it appears that by a vote of the of the local populace, they, we can increase that meal levy. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And that would be in place for ten years or something. And it, then it would follow the same the, the same structure as it does now. Every right now, every ten years, we have to vote to renew that. 30 year meal levy, levy that we just put in place two years ago. I remember two years ago we voted and we maxed it out. I believe, I believe we can but that's, change that. That's, there's two five mil adders on there now, right? <laughs> there I think the county point. commissioners can only impose, can only levy 20, and then there was five added and then five more, I think. Right. But the next, the next 10 year period, 
those will all fall to in together. Oh, they get. It'll have it all in line. They get synchronized. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, about five miles. And there will be a slight you increase in, in a mill levy now in 2019. Um, for some reason, the state believes that our farm, that our agricultural land prices went up. Values, not prices. <laughs> <laughs> so that we're going to have five, there'll be four percent increase in uh, in agricultural land prices, which will raise the mill what three percent probably. So the mill will be worth twenty one thousand basically, rather than the twenty, which doesn't make a lot of difference, but it, it's, there's something there. That's all I want. Three percent of, of twenty is uh, six hundred bucks. Yeah. These were these were all generalizations. These weren't right to the pen. Well, I, have, I have nothing else. Okay. Anybody? Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Adjourn. Been moved by Sean and we adjourn as our second to the motion. Second. Seconded by Dale. All in favor say aye. Aye. Both same sign. Motion carries. Meeting adjourned. 2.45 p.m. Next meeting. Next meeting. April or February 9th at 1 p.m. Thank you.